back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel. I'm now going to be going over the January 2023 International A-Level Pure Mathematics P3 exam. And I'm going to go through this paper question by question, each question on a separate video, sometimes even different parts of a question on separate videos, such that I can save the videos in terms of a playlist categorized by the paper it's from and also categorized from the topic it's from all right so that's how i'm going to proceed and i'm not going to just be a talking mark scheme as i keep saying i'm going to try to explain topics in detail especially when i have seen my students making certain mistakes i'm going to try to you know be here to try and help students to learn and you know learn from their mistakes and others mistakes as well and uh, I'll try to explain things for those people who may not have paid attention or not had a good teacher or didn't even have any teaching homeschooling to help those to be able to pro progress in the, you know, you know, in the topic. So if you're just looking to check your answers and you're doing fine, it might not be the right thing for you to you know, spend time looking at the videos, although I, I'm sure you will still benefit. Okay, but let's just go for the masking. Now, question number one. So the functions f and g are, are defined by f of x equals 9 minus x squared. And here is something very important for these type of questions, which many students ignore. Okay, they've given us this information next to it, which means x is an element of the real numbers, all numbers, positive, negative, whatever. However, they've limited the domain to those numbers which are greater than or equal to zero. So all numbers integers, fractions, decimals, from zero on all the way to infinity, those were included. Anything that's less than zero, whether it's minus 0 0.00001, or minus five, or minus 10, or minus infinity, all of those numbers are excluded from the domain. Okay, so that's what f of x is. And g of x is a, a three over two x plus one. And again, we have the same domain, only the positive numbers uh, you know positive side of the x axis including zero um, included in this domain the first function f of x is like a quadratic function and the second one is a reciprocal function so it's right down the range of function f now a lot of students say oh i don't like to sketch i don't like sketching uh, can you tell me a way of answering this question without having to sketch i mean to be honest with you really the best way to understand how to deal with ranges of function, especially ranges of function, is to know what the function looks like. A straight line graph will be different from a, you know, um, a quadratic graph. All right, they're not, they're not, they don't have the same situation in terms of the range. A straight, straight line graph goes on from positive infinity to negative infinity if it's unrestricted, whereas a quadratic graph will not go from positive to negative infinity when it's unrestricted because it will turn. And there will be a place you'll have a minimum point below which it doesn't go and then a maximum point above which it never ever goes. So you have to have an idea of the shape of a graph for you to be able to, uh, you know, be able to write down the range in an easy way. Okay, so even though some of these questions are one mark, it's good for you to understand how they work in terms of, you know, their shape. So 9 minus x squared, we see that f of x is a quadratic cu curve. Let me just make that a bit thinner. Okay, so we can see that f of x is quadratic. 9 minus x squared. So it's a quadratic, and we can see that the coefficient of x squared is less than 0. It's negative, so it has this kind of frowny face. Okay, and we know that this curve its vertex is going to be when x is 0 and when y is 9, 0, 9. Okay, because the, this, is going to be, this is going to be a place the highest it ever goes, okay, is going to be 9. It's, you're always going to be taking away something from 9. Okay, you're always taking away something from 9. So it's always going to be less than 9, except when x is 0. When x is 0, then this is going to become 9. That's the highest it can ever go so if you to sketch this curve it would look something like this now you don't have to make an elaborate sketch you don't even have to sketch it really you can sketch it in your mind because this is right down 
So as long as you understand what it looks like, you're fine. So this, this curve will look something like this. It's going to go through 9, and it's going to be quadratic. It's going to have a frowny face, and it's going to cut through the y-axis, x-axis at minus 3 and 3. I haven't made a very good sketch, but still. The point is that the range is um, all the values it can reach on the x, on the y-axis, sorry, on the y-axis. So we can see that um, this curve is going to go from 9, the other way around, down. Okay, it's going to be go from 9 and down. So it's going to start at line, and it's going to continue on forever in this direction downwards. Okay, now, in our particular curve, we have a restriction in the domain such that it only exists from 0 onwards. So I can get rid of all of this part. Okay, and we can see it starts from here with a closed circle and it continues on going down forever which gives it the same range as it would had have had if it was you know uh, unrestricted the range would still be the same range okay because the highest it still goes is nine because that's where it turns so we can say that the range of f you can say the range of function f is going to be f of x is less than or equal to nine or we could say y is less than or equal to 9, as we wish. All right, we can say either of those ways. Both of them are fine. But you can't say x is less than or equal to 9. It's always y or f of x. So that is um, how we can work out the range of a function by picturing what it looks like, see what the highest it can go to, and then, you know, writing down all the values it can take on the y-axis. Okay, so there is the answer to part A. You could do that very quickly. All right, without even having to draw the graph, if you understand what the quadratic looks like, and that you can see that this one has a vertex at nine, so you could you could draw this quite easily. Okay, now if the range was more restricted than this, for example, if the range said x is greater than or equal to one, for example, then you'd have to start where x equals one. In that case, y would be eight, and it would be eight and below because it would start at eight. So you have to be careful to look at the domain in order for you to know where the function is starting from. And then that, of course, will affect the range. All right. Part B says, find the value of fg 1.5. Now, fg 1.5, all it means is that you have to find what g 1.5 is first. You find what g 1.5 is first, and you substitute that value into the function f. So the first thing we've got to do is find g of 1.5. Now, the function g is 3 over 2x plus 1. So it's 3 over 2 times 1.5 plus 1. That gives you 3 over, and that's 3 plus 1, 4, 3 quarters. Okay, so we can say f g 1.5 is when you put 3 quarters into this function f. So you have 9 minus 3 over 4 squared. Okay. Um, and that gives you 9 minus 9 over 16, okay, which we can calculate. Nine minus nine over sixteen. Is that a zoom call? Okay, that gives you 135 over 16. So that's F of g 1.5 135 over 16 okay we don't need to write that as a decimal you could do it that's fine leave it that form okay so there's part b done now we want to go to part c it says find the inverse of g now the inverse of function g okay and g is defined as 3 over 2x plus 1 and it's x is greater than or equal to 0 so we want to find the inverse of this function. So first of all, we're going to algebraic, algebraically find the inverse by first of all calling g y. So we have y equals 3 over 2x plus 1. And then what we do is we swap the x and the y around. So instead of y, we write x. Instead of x, we write y. And then we rearrange and make y the subject. So what I would do here is I would 
multiply both sides by two, 2y plus 1 and divide both sides by x. So you could write this as um, 2y plus 1 equals 3 over x. And then you can subtract 1 from both sides. So 2y equals 3 over x minus 1. And then we divide both sides by 2. So we have y equals 3 over 2x minus a half. You can leave your answer like that. That's the inverse of gx. Oh, sorry, that, yeah, that's the inverse of gx. You can leave it as 3 over 2x minus a half. You could also, if you want to, at this stage, what we could have done is we could have multiplied both sides by 2x, 2y plus 1 and write this as 2xy plus x equals 3. And then we could have, ha we could have um, written as 2xy equals 3 minus x and y equals 3 minus x over 2x. That's the same as this, basically. So if you were to add these two together, these two fractions, your common denominator would be 2x. So you'd have 3 over 2x minus x over 2x, which gives you 3 minus x over 2x. So there's two alternative ways of writing your answer. Both of them are perfectly correct. Okay, so one of them is writing it as one fraction, and the other one is writing it as separate fractions. They didn't give us any instruction as to how to write it, so both of them are fine. If they had said express your answer as a single fraction, fraction, then this would be our answer. Now, there's something missing here. There's something missing in our answer. Okay, and that is, especially because the domain of this function has been restricted, therefore the range would also be restricted. Okay, so what we have to do here is we have to think about what is the range, the domain of this function. We have to write down its domain. Now, the domain of this function, of the inverse function, is the same as the range of the original function. The domain of the inverse function is always the same as the range of the original function. Why? Because the, the inverse function is like where we're swapping the x and the y's. So it's almost like we're swapping the domains and the ranges. All right, so I'm going to think about what the, the range of this function is. All right, so this is a reciprocal function. All right, and it is a proper func uh, function. It's a proper fraction, sorry. So it's a reciprocal function. It's a proper fraction. Okay, um, we can see that x can never equal negative a half, which is already excluded from the domain anyway. All right, so if we were to draw, let's think about what this would look like unrestricted first. You would have an asymptote at x equals negative a half. And the other asymptote would be when y equals zero. Okay, because this is a proper fraction when y equals zero. If you put y equals zero, this will be, it would say zero equals three, so it's undefined. So this is the other asymptote, y equals zero. And we can see it's the type where you have um, like a positive one over x kind of type. So it's going to be in these two parts. And you can confirm that it's going to, it's going to cross, um, you know, in these two parts like this. Okay. So when x equals zero, for example, y is going to be three over one, which is three. So it's going to go through um, zero, three. So it's going to go something like this. And on this side, it's going to go something like this. Now, because the domain is restricted to x is greater than 0, what we can do is we can get rid of all of this part and all of that part. And it starts from exactly x equals 0, okay, at which point y is equal to 3. Okay, and you can see the range of this function is basically simply between these two parts over here. Okay, the range of this function is between these two parts over here. Okay, the range of the function is between 0 and 3. So we can say the range of the original function is when x is greater than 0, it never equals 0 because it never touches there. Sorry, y is greater than 0 and less than or equal to 3. It equals 3, but it doesn't equal 0 because that's an asymptote. So that's the range of this function. It's domain. This is the range. The domain is this and the range is this because the domain has been restricted. Okay. Um, if it wasn't restricted, then the range would be all real numbers except for y equals 0. But because it's restricted, all of this part is now no longer existing, and all of this part is no longer existing, because it's not in the domain, only starts from here. So the range of this function is between 0 up to 3, including 3, not including 0. That means the domain of this function, the domain of the info function is the same as the range of that, but we write x, we don't write y, that's all. 
Okay, so that's the domain of this function here. Okay, so that's how we can understand this. That's the domain of our function uh, in this. It only exists between 0 and 3, the same as the range of that. Okay, so that's how we can understand this. And if you understand it in terms of the, uh, the way the graph looks, this, if you, if you were to draw the inverse function, the inverse is like the reflection in y equals x. Okay, so this is just taking things a bit further just for your better understanding. It's not like you have to do this to get the marks for this question. I'm just trying to make the understanding a bit better. So if we were to draw this graph, okay, let me just make it the color a bit different. All right, the inverse. Now, the y-intercept becomes the x-intercept, so that becomes 3 here. And the horizontal asymptote becomes a vertical asymptote, so that becomes asymptote. So we can see that the, the graph will go like, like this. It will be like this, between 0 and 3. As you can see, it's a reflection in the line y equals x. Okay, so you can see the domain of this function is restricted between 0 and 3. It doesn't go beyond 3 because it stops here. And it goes closer and closer to the air, the y-axis this time, so it gets closer and closer to zero. So that's the domain. This is the inverse function, and that's the domain we just stated. And we can see the range of this function is where y is greater than or equal to zero, which is the same as the domain of the original function. The domain and the range switch over. Okay? So that's something important. So when you write your answer down here, you should include the domain. Why should we include the domain? Because the original function has got this restriction imposed upon it. So if you don't write down the domain of your of your um, inverse function, you definitely will lose a mark. So it's very, very important that you understand that. If it was unrestricted, then maybe, you know, they would be okay about it. But especially when there's a restriction on it like this, you must write down the domain of your answer. Okay, so that's very, very important. It doesn't say, if, you don't have to write down the range. No, you have to write down the domain, unless the question says write down the range. Okay, so there's part C done, and that answers the whole question. That's question number one of this January 2023 paper, PP3. Um, I hope that was clear. I went a bit more detailed into the explanations just uh, for your benefit. Uh, thank you for watching. Other questions from this paper will be in the playlist. That If you click the link over here, it will take you to that playlist. If you click the link here, it will take you to the playlist dealing with functions and graphs from P3. You can click on this link to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. And if you would like to watch a video which tells you how to use my channel in an efficient manner, um, depending on what you're looking for, you can watch the video, the link for which will be over here. Thank you for watching and see you soon.